So Kim, uh, here we are to former deans, to former presidents of ACSA. Both of us have had a lot of leadership roles in the field. Um, so let me ask you why you wanted to become an academic leader. You've had a lot of posts. What What is it that you enjoyed about it? And why should other people think about doing it as well? Uh, hi, Tom, and thanks for the question. Um, I think that I guess in, in general, the image that came to my mind toward the end of the leadership um, opportunities I had was being a gatekeeper who could be on the other side of the gate, opening it for a new generation of people and maybe people who hadn't always been there before. Mm -hmm. so, and what I had learned by the time I got to, you know, maybe that was around the time I accepted the um, opportunity to run for ACSA president, I had figured out that the people who were in certain rooms were making decisions and I could be more effective in those rooms than not in those rooms. Mm -hmm. So that's how I came to it. Um, I think that what prepared me along the way was I was at the University of Florida at, that, uh, at the beginning of my career as a professor, and I had the opportunity to lead the Association for Academic Women at the university, mm -hmm. and then later to lead the Faculty Senate, which gave me a seat on the University Board of Trustees. And what I learned from those positions, first of all, it, it, um, it introduced me to a whole bunch of new people at my mm -hmm. university that I wouldn't have had a chance to meet if I'd stayed you know, siloed mm -hmm. in my department. So that was great for me intellectually and in all kinds of ways. Um, and it also gave me the chance to speak for our disciplines and rooms where there are very rarely people in the environmental design disciplines. Mm -hmm. So, you know, with the president, with the provost, advocating for interdisciplinary research. Um, and obviously in any position where you're a relatively newcomer and certainly on the board of trustees, I was, you know, relatively young and had not been on, you know, dozens mm -hmm. of corporate boards of trustees. It also allowed me to um, understand what I thought were the most effective leaders in the, in the group. So that helped me to probably build some skills that I, I hope I use later. And then came ACSA presidency and the deanship at the University of Virginia. And again, in both of those cases, by that time, it was pretty clear to me that um, despite whatever I might be personally intellectually interested in, that we have big um, challenges in our world. And so um, I became to began to work on sustainability as it was then described, and um, both in the ACSA presidency and then also during my deanship at Virginia to sort of make that as mainstream and non-controversial uh, a, a series of positions as possible. Yeah. So basically, it was you know yeah. creating a gateway for other people mm -hmm. and then working on important what i think to be important work how about yeah. you well I, yeah you did great work in all those areas yeah i had many of the same motivations i mean you know of course i came into academia in a kind of unconventional route i was the editor of pa and um the you know i've always felt that you know we have an obligation to sort of um write about our field to a broader audience so i loved the kind of public intellectual side of being a dean where you could, you know, as well as when I was ACSA president, you could write about big issues, and um, and so that that was and it's certainly an enjoyable part of it. I, like you, I also really enjoyed in my deanship being able to interact with, you know, the dean of medicine, the dean of law, the dean of public policy, all these other fields, and have them understand what designers bring to those mm -hmm. conversations. And I think uh, over time, many of them were surprised at how relevant design was to all of what they were doing. And I think that was part of uh, this emergence, as you know, from your own work of sort of interest in design thinking and design methods and the design process and all these other fields. So that was also a really uh, enjoyable part of being a, an academic leader. But I, like you as well, I, I, I also really enjoyed having you know, when I was a dean, having a budget that I could, you know, incentivize people to do things. Or if somebody came in 
to my office with a really good idea. I had some money that I could seed the, the project. And so this idea of being able to uh, encourage activity, to help make things happen, is also a really fun part of the job, I think. And uh, as I look back on it, I, you know, the, you, you get incredibly busy. I look back on it now and I think, how did I do all that? But <laughs> <laughs> at the time, I guess, of course, we were both younger then, uh, maybe <laughs> yes. a little more energy uh, to, to, to do all of that. But it, it was great fun. I mean, you know, did I, I was a dean for 19 years, which really shocked me when I finally realized how long I had been doing it. Uh, amazing. Uh, and compliments. I couldn't have done it nearly that long, but I'm um, I'm glad that you did, and certainly, you know, I think another part of um, being in leadership positions is you always have various peer groups, of course. So mm. there are people that I was an assistant professor with who I'm still in touch with and have kind of risen through the ranks with. I think that you and I really started working together when we were mm. both more senior in our career, and um, so that too was a great opportunity to share ideas and resources. And um, and also, you know, of course, in deanships, the kind of specific um, mechanisms that you have available. And right. as a national president of, of an organization, you have certain me mechanisms. You have uh, staff and the ACSA staff has always been great. Mm -hmm. um, you have, you know, a network of peers across the North America that are very that are aligned with what you do in, in one way or another. And similarly, in a in a dean's position, it's access to resources to incentivize things. And also, um, I was very lucky to um, be hired at the University of Virginia, where I felt very aligned with the missions of the school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I felt like the things I I mean, I I went there because I I hoped I could help them. But I felt like we were all already rowing in the same direction in terms of the built environment and the role that it can play. And so, um, you know, the most amazing resource was having great staff and great faculty who are already doing those things. And mm -hmm. sometimes as dean, you just get to hop in front of the parade and say, look at this behind me. Isn't this amazing? And it is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that idea of sort of service leadership always appealed to me as well, where sometimes as a leader, you want, you need to be at the front, but sometimes you need to be in the middle and sometimes you need to be at the back Yes. and let all yeah. your colleagues really be doing the leadership. Right. Yeah. And that's, that's part of the art of leadership is knowing when to step away, to let others lead and, um, so that 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 was also a really enjoyable part of it was it's it's not really about you it's about how the entire group can move forward. Yeah, I yeah. I always thought that you know being an academic leader is a little bit more like being a mayor of a of a city rather than you know say the head of a, an architectural firm, in the sense that um, you know I always remembered the idea that my faculty, I first of all, I couldn't fire my my tenured faculty, nor would I want to necessarily, but they can fire me. They could vote me out of office, right? And so mm -hmm. you're more like, it's more like a political role than it is, um, you know, like running an office or running a, a private firm. So. Yes, I, I think that's true. And I think sometimes that's um, a tension in the position, mm. especially in the deanship, because, um, that there are faculty members who, who see you as that you know very all powerful person, and in some ways certainly you can support tenure decisions or not, and right. um, you know raises and so forth or not. So to some extent you have that power, but I think you're exactly right that um, you want to to be doing you you want to choose a place and work with people who you can help to be better. Because right. it's not like being in an office where you can just fire people if they're not doing what you say, because right. that that rarely happens. And right. and I actually think that especially because here in Florida now um, we're going through some strange times, um, you know, to not be able to fire people easily is a very good thing. So a good thing, yeah. I think you need, that, you need uh, tenure in Florida, yeah. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I think that that kind of um, there's a kind of a ballast to and and also of course um, institutional knowledge that right. that tenured faculties bring to deanships, especially if you're new. Of course, some people come to those positions from within. You know, if you've been right. an assistant associate and full professor, and then you become the dean, 
you have a whole set of understandings that you don't if you go somewhere new. Right. Yeah. So why would a younger faculty member want to uh, aspire to become an academic leader? What What would you recommend uh, with about the job that you think others should consider? Um. Well, I think it's it's the ability to I I believe that we should all surround ourselves with you know people smarter than we are all the time <laughs> yeah. if possible and i do think that there is a lot of that in both within a university and across the country within our discipline so whether they're in leadership positions or not certainly a lot are so mm -hmm. i think that's that's a great kind of um in a certain way a selfish opportunity Mm -hmm. And I also think that it's just a much more efficient way to make change if that's your goal, because yeah. you, as you said, you've got access to, you know, resources, including financial resources, but also human resources and so forth. And so if you can persuade, you still have to be able to persuade people, but rather than kind of duking it out in a faculty meeting <laughs> over you know, who wants to teach the early morning class, it's just a much honestly, more efficient use of time, I think. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, for me, I think um, I really enjoy working with other people. And one of the things that I enjoyed about academic leadership is you're always working with others. You're in teams of people, as opposed to the typical faculty who's, who are pretty much in our own classroom doing our own work. It's much more of a, a kind of isolated kind of existence as a faculty member. Yeah. While I found when you're in academic leadership, you really have this whole group of people, other faculty, staff, you know, peers um, to work with. And I, that I really enjoyed. I, yeah. I enjoyed yeah. doing collective, collective things. So As I do, which is why it's fun to um, chat with you here. Yeah. You know, one other thing that you, you kind of mentioned, but we might want to talk a little bit more about is, um, the role that that leaders can play as public intellectuals mm. and i'm thinking about some of the work that you've done you know you've probably spoken to every national organization <laughs> in every field on the value of our discipline and things that we do and um, i've had some opportunities to do that myself not mm -hmm. certainly not in the same way but i have been as you know writing for a local right. newspaper for a long time yeah. and also i actually very much enjoyed the opportunity as dean to speak at different, you know, various conferences or to do the dean's columns or right. with ACSA to do the president's columns. I think that that opportunity is just really wonderful. Right. And I find that if you can explain our field simply enough that somebody in a completely different discipline can understand it, that's when you really know it. Yes. That's, that's when you really understand what it is we're doing. And I always enjoyed that challenge. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And maybe get a few people to think about our disciplines um, and the power they have in ways that would not be obvious at first. Right, exactly. Come to appreciate ourselves more. Well, Kim, yeah. thank you. This was fun, as always. And yeah, um, likewise. Let's, let's hope we have some other leaders wanting to, to do this in the future. Great. Well, good luck to all of them. Yeah, take care. Thank you. Bye.